Welcome back. We've heard from Kelly Schultz. Now let's turn to Dan Cox. Cox has served as a state delegate representing Frederick and Carroll County since 2019. We also asked him his thoughts on crime, gun rights, education, and the pandemic. You have been endorsed by President Trump. That's a big deal. How are you feeling about it? Well, it's quite an honor. I tell you, I Minnie, mean, it's, it's probably the greatest honor of any politician to have the uh, seated, uh, former seated president of the United States endorsing the campaign because of the America first values that we're running on. And because I have stood with the president on those values, I was in Philadelphia fighting for election integrity with the lawyers for Trump team. I was uh, obviously an RNC delegate and as a state delegate in Maryland, I have stood on the House floor and advanced those values that say that really the Republican Party's platform is that the Constitution and individual liberties cannot be waived at any time, that our streets must be protected and made safe by the ending of this catch and release program that sadly my opponent has been part of with the budget increases, and that we need to get back to an understanding of lowering taxes and stopping the outrageous spending, which is just causing this inflation nightmare at the pump. So it's an honor to have President Trump's endorsement, and we're going to win. You mentioned inflation. That's a big deal right now. A lot of voters concerned about it. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to immediately suspend the gas tax. I've been calling for this uh, since January when I introduced the bill to do so. I was uh, glad to see that the, um, that the governor and the Democrats um, and, and our party as Republicans got together to suspend, uh, suspend for 30 days. The problem is that that was not enough. And so we need to make sure that this is more of a long-term fix. And way to, the way to do that is to take immediate action with suspending the gas tax to then force the legislature to come into session and to address the, uh, you know, the growing inflation. One of the issues that I've been bringing to light is the fact that Maryland has a moratorium on oil and gas and is pumping millions of dollars into electric cars. And that's just not going to help everybody at the pump right now. We need to look at uh, ending the moratorium on, on oil and gas here and pushing back on this Biden administration agenda that says they're going to cut off the pipeline and cut off our supply. The way to get this rolling again is to make sure that we have more supply. So that's my focus as the next governor. As governor, how would you work with Baltimore City leaders on dealing with the crime issue? Well, first and foremost, we would have an immediate emergency meeting. And uh, I think Mosby and uh, the mayor uh, need to step aside. We need to take an immediate receivership to end the violence, to make sure that the streets have this um, safety brought back. Uh, the governor has a responsibility to make sure that the blood on the streets ends. This is almost daily uh, murders going on, carjackings, you name it. And now it's a revolving door. We need to stop this, uh, this bail so-called reform act, which simply allows a revolving door for violent criminals. That's got to end. And we need to start prosecuting and putting people away that are putting holes in people. And, and that's happening right now, Mindy. I mean, right now in Baltimore City, you can shoot up somebody and literally they will let you out on bail. It's happening. And we see it happening because on the Eastern Shore, a police officer uh, just a couple weeks back, I went to his funeral, was murdered by somebody who was a violent criminal arrested in Baltimore City and let out by Marilyn Mosby. And that's got to end on my watch. Did you have a specific crime plan in mind? We do. We have a plan that uh, we've looked at uh, was successful with New York City. We've released that plan. It's um, it's published and it focuses on ensuring that not only do we put away the violent criminals and stop the revolving door, but we also target these um, what are uh, so-called the uh, issues with um, graffiti crimes and squeegee crimes. So in other words, to kind of bring a a pattern and a policy back into the city that says, even if you're out there uh, committing petty theft and petty crime, we're going to hold you accountable because we don't want you getting into the gangs and cartels. We want to make sure that we have a path for you that says prosperity is when you do what's right and when you go out and get your education. And that, that's why education has to be central to this. I'm a school choice advocate. I'm going to push for that. We're going to expand boost. We're going to make sure our charter schools are expanded in Baltimore City. And we're going to make sure that our, our kids are not left behind like, like they are. Right now, there's a 1% passage rate in Baltimore City. That's an outrage when we're actually pouring as a legislator. We've put billions of dollars into the city in the education system. It's one of the highest funded uh, public education systems in America, and yet it has the worst turnout. And so we're going to turn that around and make sure parents are back in charge. We'll hear more from Republican gubernatorial primary candidate Dan Cox when we come right back.
what would your plans be specifically to improve public What would your plans be specifically to improve public education? Well, first and foremost, we're going to appoint individuals to the State Board of Education that will respect parents' rights. We're going to end the CRT. We're going to take out of the ECOMAR and the, the regulations, Code of Maryland regulations, this push from the state and national level from the Biden administration to indoctrinate our kids pre-K up on gender identity politics. That's Politics has no place in the classroom. We need to get back to reading, writing, and arithmetic. STEM technologies uh, need to be taught and need to be uh, heralded as the path of the future. So I think when we focus on parents and make sure that they are back in charge, that they have the information they need, that they can then opt their children out of these um, sexualized programs that are offensive to many, many parents, that they can say, let's stop dividing against uh, our kids against each other and focus on the greatness of America. That's step number one. Step number two would be obviously immediate action to fund teachers' salaries and not this bureaucracy like what is happening right now, and to focus on ensuring that parental rights includes the right to school choice. When you have school choice, when you have charter schools expanding, you uplift all the schools because then there's competition. So that's the path forward, I believe. We see it happening across the country. It's, it's successful, and we need to get to that here in Maryland because our kids deserve it. Congress recently passed a bipartisan gun reform plan, but the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the New York gun control law. What do you want to see changed in Maryland's gun laws? I want to see more freedom. Whenever you have the opportunity for individuals to protect themselves, when, when women can uh, carry their own weapon if they need that protection, when you have businesses that are able to protect themselves, when you have people, uh, everyday folks have the opportunity to protect themselves, you see crime decreasing. In the states where the opportunity for uh, accessing your own personal defense is limited you have higher crime rates just like chicago one of the most strictest gun law cities in the nation has some of the most outrageous daily shootings and the same can be said for baltimore city very very danger uh, dangerous places and so we need to have supporting back the blue and making sure that our police have our backs which they do um, that we have their backs but at the same time we need to empower citizenry to have the access to their own defense so that they can make sure that they're safe and as our time is winding down, I want to know your thoughts on the pandemic. What would you do moving forward to get past the pandemic? Well, this is what highlights me from my opponent. My opponent chose the non-essential list, so-called, and locked down our state with the governor. She forced masked our kids and said, wear the damn mask. She's uh, right now working, uh, has been uh, working as Commerce Secretary until recently with uh, the $2 billion pandemic prevention tracking center, which has a a vaccine passport to track our health. I will strike those down immediately and reverse the mandates. Never again will our kids be masked, forced masked in schools for eight hours a day. It's still going on in certain parts. We need to also make sure we never have a vaccine passport that says that you cannot access goods and services. You're a second class citizen. You can't have a job unless you have a jab. That's all going to end on my watch. And any government official or corporation that tries to take possession of our bodies and tries to eliminate our rights, they're the ones that are going to be fined and not uh, the average, you know, not the Marylander. And so we're going to turn that ship around and restore freedom to the free state. And real quick, before we have to go, what do you have to say to voters as the polls are coming up, early voting has begun, what do you have to say? Thank you so much. You know, I'm asking for your vote humbly. This is the time to restore freedom to Maryland and it's a broad policy. So we have great support across all party lines. 
We are the candidate that can win. We have President Trump's endorsement, so the Republicans are fired up and independents are fired up because they understand our America first values are the values of the future. It's to say that we're going to put Marylanders first and we're going to make sure that we have money back in our pockets. We're not going to have this wasteful spending. And we're going to make sure that we once again respect and honor parents and make sure the education is world class. That's what I'm asking uh, to do as your next governor. I'm asking for your vote. Today's early voting. Please go out and vote and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Dan Cox, for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless. In addition to Kelly Schultz and Dan Cox, two other Republicans are seeking the party's gubernatorial nomination. Robin Ficker and Joe Werner are also running in this year's primary.